Uh, so I'm originally from, I grew up in New Zealand uh, in a small town called Porirua in Wellington. Um, born in Samoa and my parents migrated pretty much just a year after I was born. I've been in Melbourne now um, five years. Um, previous to that I was living in Perth. Oniata as a kid, she was always in a lot of trouble. Um, testing the boundaries, didn't understand no the word no so I was always looking for the why not how come and how I could get what I wanted <laughs> yeah I guess we were always um, my parents didn't really um, we just played sport like through through primary school um, I think that's kind of where our passion was just kind of throwing the ball around and just getting involved in the team so uh, when I was in high school that's when I sort of was introduced to rugby to actually play and I played in the boys team uh, under 55s um, and then one day um, you know found out that the club my brother was playing for North um, you know had a women's team um, and I just got asked just to my dad just said just go along and see how you're going to go so yeah and then I've just been playing club rugby since since then. Yeah, uh, so I was in the under 55s um, VR College boys team and it was against uh, Wellington College which is one of the sort of private schools um, in Wellington and I wore headgear. Uh, I always did when I was younger and one of the guys, I think the boys actually realised it was a girl playing not a guy yeah. and uh, that was a lot of fun. Um, I remember just running over one of the guys and it was like the boys in the team were really supportive but then I sort of had to stop because the school actually made a complaint to ours that you know girls shouldn't be playing in their league and um, so that's sort of when my dad said hey look there's a women's team that you can play for but I continued to train with the boys and they're always you know very welcoming and we sort of always sort of played that touch rugby um, on the field at lunchtime and and when the teachers weren't there you would tackle but when they came around you were just playing touch so that's yeah. sort of how you got away with it in school so yeah okay um i think my strengths really show when i do play um and i think aggression is a big part of what would stand out to other players um i sort of just kind of get in there and just do the job um but I think it's also just learning that other girls don't play the way I do and have a different reaction to the way I play. Um, quite abrasive, quite straightforward, without any thought of feelings <laughs> um, and how that affects people. And you know, I think because I've been training and been around guys, it's sort of, they just get on with it. Um, you know, if you, you say something and the boys just get over it was you know girls it's it's there's an emotion there and uh, I do feel it sometimes but it's sort of when you're on the field you just need to do your job and it's when you're off it that you need to sort of re-evaluate a lot of things and how you could have done better so I think now it's just more self-assessment um, and learning how to take care of my body I mean I'm in my 30s now and you know I've got players that are coming through who are much younger so I need to learn how to look after my body and recover well so I can, you know, I can turn up again the next week and compete at that top level. Yeah. It's it's a challenge because, you know, I'm, I'm also a mother, I work, we run a business, so, uh, and my partner as well works, so it's really that time management um, that's, and just being organised on what I have on every week uh, you know where I need to travel to for trainings for recovery I'm pretty much in the car most of the time because I'm going to and from training so in Melbourne so spread out for what I need it's it's not very, it's not central so it's just that part of it that also takes up a lot of time is so however I can I just have to kind of be be, be on point with them um, with being where I need to be, uh, otherwise I'm just always falling back and then playing catch up and then also trying to make it in time for school pickups and stuff. So yeah, yeah it's it's challenging, but I think because I want it, that I make it work. Yeah. yeah, I think that's the biggest 
rather than giving myself excuses of oh, why I can't and then it just it gets me nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for me, because I, where I want to go, I know I need to get help from people who have already, who have already achieved it and because we're in an AFL dominated state, it's hard to find, um, not hard, just, you know, it's a stretch to get, the, get to the facilities and to get access to the training that, um, that I need. Um, so through great friends, um, through rugby and getting to know the sort of the who's who um, and having also no shame to ask the question, um, you know, sort of ask, you know, how, how I can get better, who's the person I need to speak to. Um, so I have really great relationships with the Rebels. Um, I have Zane Hilton uh, who mentors me now. Uh, so he's the assistant coach there for the Rebels and I have mentors in other areas including my trainer, you know, John Povey who helped me understand what training in the gym and what it's like out outside of it. So I just I just thought you just rock up and train and train, but there's just so much more of the mental battle you kind of have to understand when you're sort of going to get older, or even just understanding it while you're competing. Um, yeah, so it's just that I think that's the only way. You know, I think I've learned through self development that you get better. It's just asking asking the people where who are at the top with of their game how they did it and what you need to do and just do the work that they give you. Oh yeah, yeah. so c c because I, you know, nobody wants to train with me, it's really hard when I try to put it, I've even put it out on Facebook, um, you know, I need a training partner and uh, he, he's, he's awesome, you know, he's been a huge help um, to me, so you know, he's in a physical job as a construction worker and then I ask him, hey, can you scrum against me? Um, you know, he's, he's buggered after yeah. 12 hour shifts and you know, so even that we try to work out like a spare moment in the weekend or, you know, where he may have a day off to say, you know, can you just scrum against me for half an hour, which is sort of what I kind of give myself every second day and he either helps me or he doesn't. But it's huge help because if I can, I see if I can manage to scrum against a guy, then, you know, if coming to train against a girl is just going to be easier. Um, and I want to be around people who can really push me. No, I'm just like, because it's finally, it's finally happened at, you know, a level that I, I want it to be. Um, Canela Sharks is something that I just happened to see a friend's Facebook post and I, I was actually quite depressed at the time because it was about three weeks after I got injured before our test in New Zealand. So I had really done nothing. Um, except wallow myself and I thought because I think when I have sort of something to work towards then I'm like then I'll work to it and uh, there wasn't anything for me until this was late last year and I think October and then I knew there wasn't going to be anything for another six months to compete in so I thought why not so it was like two days out and then I flew up to Sydney and just gave it a go thought okay this was awesome sort of kind of got me back into things and um, didn't think much of it after that until I got the call and you know sort of kind of kick-started things to you know I've got something that could help my um, help in both areas because here in Melbourne I, I don't really get the game time that I need um, for my position as well so whatever game time I can get I'm all for it to you know improve my fitness um, physically as well and then just you know maybe have that extra edge over other players because I can you know I've got the fitness for the for the two so it's still a working progress but it's a lot of fun and you know I'm excited for what both codes have for women um, in the future How do they well I said a sharing and the other people are like you know what are you doing um, but then I think it's it's that communication I have to give to both codes to say, hey, look, this is my intention. This is, you know, this is my goal. But, and that's probably that breakdown that you know people going, oh, well, you're going to league or you're going to union. How's that going to help them? Um, and I can understand that. And I think selfishly, I'm thinking, well, what's the best for me? How I can be the better player for the two codes and. 
I know the first year where I played rugby league here in Victoria, um, playing league made me so much better in union. So, you know, they got that benefit, but it was just to sort of look at what is on the cards for the year um, in terms of tournaments, um, how that will affect me. And I guess, like my partner keeps saying, you know, you, you'd be gutted if you got injured in league and that would rule you out for, you know, any chances in union. But I sort of don't want to have those kind of thoughts in my head. You know, if it happens, it happens. Um, but just to think, and so having mentors and the right people around me to encourage me really just help me just go for it. Otherwise, yeah, it just makes it a lot harder. And I don't like listening to people who don't, who haven't done it themselves. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, right. everything. <laughs> um, you know, I've had to go back to work to fund my, uh, to fund what I want to do for this year, especially with World Cup and um, and flying up to Sydney. Uh, so yeah, everything from petrol to boots to um, flights. I'm sort of okay for gear because most of it's given to us for free. Um, but even treatment, you know, um, that recovery. And so I've had to look into how I can get sponsorship or, you know, discounts that could help to, you know, offset the out-of-pocket expense because it's a huge ask to take it out of our families. I mean, we've got two young boys who um, soon are going to be starting college and I know I sort of can't continue forking out for myself when we need to be focusing on the education. So having that sort of backup plan um, is what I'm looking at while I'm playing. Um, but yeah, it's a huge cost, um, especially as a female. Look, it's, that's not the focus this year. Um, it would be an added bonus um, because, you know, one of the goals for me personally is to be a representative in both codes, um, to, to, to be a dual international. Um, but I first have to get through the World Cup for, uh, for the Wallaroos first. That, that's my, my main focus. And I guess because of where I can see potential for rugby league and the growth of it, uh, how fast it's expanding, um, you know, I'm not ruling it out. It gives me sort of playing time that I needed, especially for my position, because I'm, you know, I'm a front rower and front rowers aren't the necessary pick for, you know, sevens, um, whereas in nines and thirteens, you know, there's that chance there. And it, for me, it's just learning the rules because it's two different sports, two different kind of fitnesses. Um, and, I don't know the rules in either right now, <laughs> but um, yeah, so that, that's, yeah, that's where my focus is. Alright. When I'm out training, I am family time. I have to actually schedule in like family time, the time to take the kids to and from school, time with my partner, um, you know, going to work, um, the time for business and then also self-development and um, just pretty much organising. So it's sort of like plan, do, plan, do. That's sort of what I kind of do. But the times that I'm not doing anything, I actually like to just do nothing <laughs> and just like relax. So, you know, going to the beach or just sitting there watching movies. I really like my downtime because life is so busy. Um, it's always on the move, you know, I've got the two boys are still, you know, they're not teenagers yet, so they actually want to still hang out with their parents. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so just giving them that time and then, yeah, trying to factor in, making sure I have enough sleep as well. Uh, so there's just so much, uh, you know, got on. And then when another, something else comes into the frame, it's just like, okay, how do I fit this in? Can it be done? Um, sort of good at multitasking but it's just trying to work that out and with the family yeah. I don't actually have a like a role or anything like that I basically I think through my networks I, I get invited to a lot of events where you know I can network with other people uh, and because I'm still playing I've been asked to you know would you like to set up a club and I just don't have the time right now because I do want to focus on just playing 
Um, but any chance that I can get to help out, um, like I, in the weekend I went to help out the VS Barbarians, and they had some school girls there, they were in a brand new club. Um, so that at the moment is sort of, sort of how I'm helping out is just getting asked by people, but um, I guess it'd be great to be more aligned with say, you know, the Victorian Rugby Union and League to see, well, how is how can I help to promote um, and then also just looking at other avenues that I can do that. Mm. I'd still love to be part of sport and that's kind of what I'm working on at the moment, sort of a business plan to, and I can see the growth in women in sport, so how I can capitalise on that and what I've, the struggles that I've gone through as being an athlete and trying to uh, fund myself, how I can make that transition easier for females coming through because I mean I've had a brother who's an all-black who you know everything sort of, sort of set for men um, they've got their everything sort of organized for them and whereas the women I've, I've seen so many struggle and you know they're doing fundraisers and things like that so how um, I can sort of put something together not only at that fitness space for them through a number of sports um, but also that mentorship, how they can get sponsorship and uh, perhaps endorsements as well. Uh, so that's sort of an idea plan that I've got on the, that I'm trying to put together for when I am ready, I can just roll it out to when I finish, finish playing, um, which I hope would be by the next World Cup. Yeah, so I think I, my body still has um, two more World Cups in, in me. Um, because yeah, it's, you know, sport has given me so much. I don't, I don't think I could just walk away from it and just not give back. Um, so yeah, oh yeah, uh, five forty, uh, four forty-five every morning. Um, I think it's just that hunger to to be better, um, to to have my sons. See, mummy did it. We can do it. Um, I think in this day and age, you know, people are so shut off from. Oh, you can't do that. Like, I'm a person. I just when someone says no, I just question it to the point where they they really get pissed off. <laughs> um, but all I'm looking for is an explanation. You know, how do I how do I do what I want to do? And you know, there's been so many others who have said had no's ten thousand times, but on that that like next one they've they've hit their targets so yeah. I think it's to be that person that people can aspire to for themselves um, and how they can make a difference in, in their circle um, it doesn't have to be to change the world but how it can make an impact to the people you love so